Dudes to Dads, brought to you by Dad University, is a podcast to help men understand and navigate the transition of being a single dude into a family man. How do we make sense of it all? Well, we probably won't be able to, but let's go ahead and have some fun trying. And we are back. We are back. I'm Jason Kreidman. I'm Alan Bush. And this is Dudes to Dads. Dudes to Dads. Dudes to Dads. <laughs> Dudes to Dads. We should have all of the hours of recording that we do before we come on the air. Right. Of all of us, or of, of us doing funny voices that we think are funny. Other <laughs> right. people would right. funny. We do not include them in the show. For we it. do all these outtakes right. and pretend that we're funny. <laughs> and then we put a laugh track on it and yeah. we make ourselves think that we're funny. <laughs> that would be funny to put a laugh track. That would be cool. <laughs> How are you? Good. How about you? A little yourself? perky today. A little perkier. Doing well. Better. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I don't know if that's a good uh, description to say to another man that he's perky. <laughs> You're but, very perky today. But I'm close enough with you Pretty that I feel like I can say that. Masculine and description. And I have a you. wedding ring on. That's right. So. <laughs> You're all good. <laughs> uh, tonight's episode 138. My child is scared of everything. Ah. Kids' fears are real. Yeah. So. I was talking to a dad the other day. Um, it was it was an interesting conversation, and he was mentioning his five year old girl, which doesn't matter, but it's just sure. some context. Yeah, is scared of everything, <laughs> and the reason being is because like he introduced me to her, and she kind of like went around the back of him. Yeah, you know, because I mean, she was just really scared. And afterwards, he was like, "Gosh, she's scared of everything." Like it was a. Uh, It was just interesting how he had said that. Yeah. Um, He said, she just seems scared of everything and everybody, you know? (laughs) Now, I don't know if he was exaggerating or not, but it did give me the idea for this episode. Sure, sure. Kudos to him. Yeah, He may know who he is. Right. Um, But the truth is, is that 100% of kids have some kind of fear or another. Yeah. Now, they might not be scared of everything. That was just clickbait. (laughs) Which, if anybody knows, yeah. (laughs) Right. But, you know, nobody just has no fear. Right. You know, um, and certainly, you know, some kids have more fears than others. So I wanted to first understand what are some common fears that kids have. Yeah. Um, there's actually a website, anxioustoddlers.com. I'll put uh, a list on it. And it, ta- it talks about, yeah, just some of the things that kids go through. I want to see that logo. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a kid screaming. A kid, <laughs> um, so we're going to go over these up to age 11. But of course, you know, there's still many more after that with teens and into, you know, sure. It, there's a lot more and yeah. even into adulthood yeah, right. that are common. Yeah. Um, but just to give you some examples. And so, and I, and the reason for this is for dads to understand that when your child is having these fears and you feel like they're scared of everything, for the most part, realize that it's probably fairly age appropriate, mm-hmm. that it's fairly common. Um, and then we're going to discuss maybe a couple things you can do to try to help with it. Okay. So to try to overcome or at least deal with it, maybe not overcome it. Yeah. So age two to four is what we're going to start with. Anything related to potty training. <laughs> <laughs> so like going to the bathroom, it's going to hurt. I don't know how to do it. Like a lot of that. Cause you know, at, at two, a lot of them are starting to, it's going to hurt. Well, yeah, so they really, I guess. Oh yeah. No, they, yeah. you'd be surprised. <laughs> like they're scared to go to the bathroom yeah. because they, it's, it's a very foreign thing. Right. Like they don't realize. I've been like, doing it in my pants for this long. Totally. I can continue this. But they begin to feel and realize what it is that they're doing. Right. So that's where it changes. It's like, so um, common one, this is throughout everything, is the dark. Yes. Just common. That's a common one. Lightning, thunder. Oh, yeah. Shadows, yeah. even. Um, big, big one, separation from parent. That happens from yeah. two to four. Yeah. Um, getting lost is mm-hmm. a big one. So, I mean, just the idea that they can't see their parents, they get freaked out. Yeah. Um, all kinds of water. So, a <laughs> pool, a bath. Mm. Like, you will see kids freaking out near a pool. They don't want to get in. They're screaming, all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, another common one, animals. Um, another big one, and you see this as we approach Halloween, people in costumes and masks, <laughs> yeah. like masks, especially. <laughs> Halloween is going to be a terrifying night for oh, toddlers. It, it can be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. So 
what does this mean? That like, there's so many things that kids are scared of, you know, and, and, and that they're common. Not every kid's scared of all of these, but it's a very, very common thing. And I can recall right off the bat that, you know, remembering my kids. Sure you know, getting, being scared of a lot of these things. Now that may be different from somebody who feels like their child is scared of everything. Mm -hmm. But I think when some parent says that it's just frustrations that they're just, there's a lot of things that they feel like they're scared of and they just are, don't feel like they feel like their child's different because they may have seen a different child. Like, as an example, like for, let's say it was me and another child of the same age comes up and is like, Hey, how's it going? Like, nice to meet you. And then the other child's like running behind them, you know, behind <laughs> yeah. them. In, it's in loud, fear, aggressive person coming terror. towards them. Yeah. This type A guy walking up to him. How's it going? In a dad university <laughs> shirt. Yeah, yeah. Super dad. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Um, so let's look at age five to seven. So still many issues related to the toilet. That just seems to be an ongoing theme. I think it changes when you're in college. Yeah. Um, and you start it's going to hurt. Then you start to appreciate it. Right. The dark still. Right. Now, this is when kids start talking about monsters, zombies, yeah. ghosts. A lot of their imagination gets wrapped up yes. into a lot of this. Imagination starts happening. You know, ghosts under the bed or like monsters, monsters under, under the, the bed, bed yeah. that kind of stuff. Still separation from a parent. Big. Five to seven year olds still Even at that point, don't want to leave mom and dad's side. Mm -hmm. I can vouch for that one. Mm -hmm. Um, When I go camping or when I went camping, my daughter was a five-year-old. She was still, you know, just still wanted to stay close, was was scared to leave and and me not be there. Yeah. Um, This one is interesting, too, which happens at age five to seven is because I think they also go to school for the first time into kindergarten. The fear of people not liking them. Mm. So they start to they begin to relate to other people and how other people see them and um, think of them, which is was kind of sad when I saw that one. You know, the fact that people are thinking that kids are thinking about that at that age. Sure. That people might not like them. Yeah. Uh, But it's but it's the truth. Fear of doctors, dentists, Mm -hmm. people like that. Shots, getting shots. Yeah. Um, And again, same as we said, two to four water pools. Mm -hmm. All that stuff still can be very, very scared. And so what happens is interesting because you'll see a group of people, I've seen this, get together and let's say they're going into the pool and there'll be a five, six year old who's still scared of the pool. Yeah. And that you can see it, especially for a dad, a little bit of angst in the parent because he's like, how come you're five, six years old? Like, get in there. You know, like I've seen that. (laughs) Right. And the reality is, it's just, it's common, yeah. like, especially if they haven't been around a pool a lot. Right. You know, it's yeah. different if like you have your own pool and they're in the backyard swimming, you know, whatever, yeah, yeah. Or, or your family goes to the pool a lot. But mm-hmm. like if you haven't been and they're not experienced in it, it, it can be a little daunting. Yeah. So that could be um, another one that I've seen as common as loud noises. Yeah. Um, so bangs, gun, like anything with a Trucks. really loud noise. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's why you often, when you go to like shows or things, you know, they have kids with like ear muffs or like little ear plugs yeah. or whatever, cause they can get really, really scared of that stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so then we move on to eight to 11 year olds. Again, fear of darkness. It sounds like this the fear of darkness just goes because I feel like that's that have, a, right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There's people, like you said, as adults even who have that issue. Yeah, but, no, for sure. Know, well, especially. yeah, have all of these issues. <laughs> right. Um, bad people are being kidnapped, sort of mm-hmm. being taken away. They start to like see how they relate to other people and they understand that there's good people and bad people. Sure. Whereas I think when you're younger, that's kind of a like, healthy fear, though. What do you think? Yeah, well, like, remember, be mindful it, of these people. That yeah, well, it's it's tricky people. Sure, not yeah. strangers. Not rat strangers, right? Tricky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, being home alone. Mm-hmm. So the idea of just not having anyone else there. Come on, latchkey kid. Yeah, uh, this one I can see really strong. Something bad happens to the parents. The yeah. fear of that. Yeah, and this goes deeper into the fear of dying. So they have their own. They start to understand mortality. Mm-hmm. Um, and also loved ones dying. Mm -hmm. So that becomes a really strong fear. It's like the the fear of being without mom and dad Mm -hmm. or relatives or loved ones. Um, That can be bad. Uh, Fear of disease and illness. So Mm -hmm. there's a lot of negativity, as you can see, like the 8 to 11, they start to, I think it's because they start to understand things. I was going to say, they get exposed to the world and they start seeing that there's a mortality. Yeah. You know, so they really understand it at that point. When you're a kid, you don't, you think things last forever, but, but. Well, you also live in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Right. Yeah. So like aches and pains, like things that can be bothering them on their body and their thing, they could like be a little bit more like a hypochondriac, like (laughs) kind of worrying that something's wrong. 
um, school failure. Mm -hmm. So they actually begin to have fear that they're going to do really bad in school, even oftentimes when they are doing well. Mm -hmm. Uh, That that, that can be a big problem. Um, Taking tests. So they, in school, start to take tests. They have a fear of the test. That it's, uh, they know they're going to be judged on the test and scored. Mm-hmm. So that can become a big fear. Another one, having no friends mm-hmm. or even you know, being teased by their peers. Uh, so that's, that's a hard one, too, because when they're in school, like you don't have control over that. So it's like, how do you quelch that? Well, by giving them confidence and, right. and doing that. And then um, fear of heights, which, mm-hmm. of course, goes into adulthood as well. Um, and then fear of like extreme weather again. So storms, lightning, thunder, that yeah. kind of stuff can happen, too. I know. Yeah. I knew some adults that were scared of that. I think my, my ex and when I lived yeah, in Long Yeah, if you're not Beach, familiar with it. She's like, like, I thought it was the wrath of God coming yeah. down. With, cause the thund- especially if it's like right over your head and lightning is just striking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And as I mentioned, I mean, the, you know, this goes on to 12 and above. And I'll sure. put a link in, the, in our uh in our podcast notes, but um, yeah, it just, it keeps going. So, so what do we do? I mean, that's really the, the crux of this is like, mm-hmm. you know, if we find that our children or our child are scared, so what can we do? So first you have to acknowledge the fear and provide empathy. Sure. So talking about it makes it less powerful. Mm-hmm. And so of course, acknowledging and saying, Hey, yeah, that can be scary. I can totally understand like how you'd be scared, mm-hmm. you know, um, and, and, and just acknowledging it or talking about it, it's going to help. Number two, do not ridicule or exacerbate the feelings. You know, you could n- you never want to laugh at them or make them feel worse for having those feelings. Like, right. don't be silly. How could you, how would you think that lightning's going to strike us or, you know, <laughs> it's, just, it's just the dark, <laughs> like there's lights all over the place. Why are you so scared? You know, yeah. that kind of talk is really negative and really bad. And I think dads have a tendency probably to do that more than moms mm-hmm. because they think they need to be tough, right. especially if they're dealing with a little boy mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, that, that, that just happens to be the case. It's yeah. like the machismo, you know, they just, they feel like they should, boy or girl should be strong enough to handle this and right. not really understanding that. No, it's a real fear. Um, another tip, and this was interesting. I found, uh, is not to avoid the fear. So in other words, well, you, you want to you know provide support and care as you approach it. So as an example, maybe if they're afraid of the pool, you don't want to not go to the pool. Right. Like say, oh, well, they're scared of it. It might be that you hold them. Yeah. You know, it might be you Ease help, into it. Yeah, you help them wear some floaties. Yeah. You know, or right. like there's things that you can do, but you don't want to avoid it all together. You know, let's say they have a vo- uh, fear of animals. Same thing. Mm. You know, say, oh, we're not going to go to the petting zoo. Well, no, here, I'll, let's just start with, a, you know, a nice animal. You talk about a rabbit or something, <laughs> you know, and then you just start small and you can do that. So you don't want to avoid the fear because then it makes it, it makes it like solidifies the fact that that's scary mm-hmm. and you don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was kind of interesting because normally you think like, oh, well, if they're scared of that, I'm just going to avoid it. Yeah, it's kind there's of the still part thing. of me that's I, I I kind of agree with that, like easing them into something, especially mm-hmm. if it's like an a really unnatural fear. Like it's like the dark is going to happen. Like it's right. going to be nighttime at some point in time. So yeah. why don't we start off maybe get a nightlight, maybe then reduce it a little bit from there, or like you said, animals. I want them to be. I want them to love animals. I love right. animals. So why not, you know, get them used to, like I said, rabbit first and move our way up to a tiger. Right. <laughs> go ahead, son. Just go, yeah. go into the, I know he's tiger. growling, but he's not hungry. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. Have you seen those, those pictures or those videos online of the, of the animals in the glass? Oh, like coming at the glass in the zoo. Yeah. I recently saw that on YouTube. With a it was, gorilla. Yeah. Well, it's like the gorillas banging on the glass. You yeah. think it's going to break. Yeah. Um, or like a, a tiger that like literally went after the kids, like to, to eat, eat the kid um you know like this whole mouth opens up like yeah. it's gonna eat the kid but luckily the glass His is glass there in front of him, yeah. oh it's a, it's crazy there was I mean. one with it <laughs> not to get back on this uh, sidetrack but i think it was a beluga whale hmm. and uh the kids were like looking at it and they went and it just kind of made this like face at them and like kind of looked like opened its mouth and it, yeah. the kids backed off but it was, it was it was almost joking with them right but it kept doing it like it was like taunting playing them. with them <laughs> yeah it was yeah, playing yeah. with them were you do you remember being scared of stuff when you were a kid was there anything that you were scared of i you know going 
think from like young, adult, young, young adult, young kid, uh, probably the dark was one of those things that I yeah. was a little bit scared of. So like a nightlight with type of thing. And then as I got to school age or a little bit more into like grade school, elementary school, and even up to high school, I was <laughs> somewhat ironically, I was telling you earlier that I was scared to talk in public and, and talk oh, in class. Yeah, yeah. And ironically, I'm a teacher now right. so <laughs> at a university and I do yeah. public speaking again events, but it's just, uh, it was one so of those you seem to have overcome that. I, I think I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I just became it, a different the difference you get paid <laughs> <laughs> yeah i didn't get paid that, yeah that's probably that was it. the difference no but it was yeah. one of those things that i was really really nervous uh being ridiculed and or being in front of people and saying what i have to say and i'd get shakes and it just was really it was kind of um i was a very shy kid i remember party. the fear of darkness i you also were... remember fearing dogs tremendously oh why is that but well because i got bit you got bit i got um a, i was it was a friend we were camping yeah i remember it vividly actually we were camping at the beach and um you know normal dog everybody's like hey blah, 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 whatever and i went to pet the dog and it like barked at me or, or you know like lunged at me yeah and i turned like to run away and it bit me in the butt oh no yeah like so like hard cartoonish. like i had to yeah. like they had to check me for rabies yeah and, like, whatever yeah like because it went through my my clothes and oh, like geez. yeah it bit me really really hard and so i remember then being terrified Ugh. for i mean i don't know how old i was yeah but, it just takes one to ruin your experience yeah man. i mean and i still in the back of my mind like with larger dogs or even yeah. a dog starts to bark a little bit i still think about it yeah you know, not as no uh, it's not sure. as bad but, but i still, still think about that like no. that comes up yeah um i mean we've had dogs and some yeah. since then yeah. and I, I i mean i love them but yeah it's just that kind of thing where like you can't control it you yeah. know it's still an animal that ultimately yeah. can do what it, need, it wants to do sure sure um or had a bad day totally <laughs> yeah so uh getting back to the thing so don't avoid the fear right you know that's that was the uh impetus for what we were talking about sure so don't af- don't avoid it um this one is good number four and, and i like this because um i grew up with this type of system is have them rate the fear from one to 10. Mm -hmm. So my mom was a big proponent of the one to 10 scale. (laughs) We'd use that all the time. Like, well, from one to 10, how do you blah, 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 blah. Or how much do you want to do this? What's a scale one to 10? And it's like, it gives you a really good gauge (laughs) of like things. Right. And so what you might find is that it's not as intense as you thought. Mm-hmm. You know, if you say 10 is really intense, one is your tens, you're really scared. Like you terrified yeah. one, you're not scared at all or zero. You're not scared at all. Where does that lie? Or you might find, you know, that it's more intense than you thought. Yeah. Like you're thinking, oh, well, I know that they're scared of this and realize like, no, that's a nine or 10. Right. You know? Right. Um, you know, as the child, the younger the child is, the less accurate that's going to be. Sure. Because sure. they might think that anything's a 10. Yeah. Right. Or they might not understand, understand the scale. Yeah, um, and then number five. Teach them relaxation or breathing techniques. A lot of this falls under anxiety, Mm -hmm. you know, or they start to manifest itself with anxiety. So teach them at a very young age on, um, you know, how to breathe through something, how to calm themselves, you know, and, and that's realistic, especially if there's something where you can see and feel them getting worked up. Right, um, right. If you can remove them from the situation, that's best, but also teaching them to, if they are faced with the situation, you know, how can I deal with that? And that could also be like positive reinforcement even. So like teaching a mantra of like, I can do this. Yeah. You know what? I can handle this. I can do this. I'm strong. I'm, you know, whatever that can be something in addition to the relaxation or the breathing. Yeah. Um, it was funny. I heard my son the other day, I forgot what we were doing. He goes, let's do this. It was, like, <laughs> it was just like, it was just a strange, it was funny coming out of a kid's mouth. <laughs> I think we were like going to clean or something. And he was just like, let's do this. <laughs> I was like, that's pretty enthusiastic. Wow. You're, yeah. He needs to be a coach. It wasn't clean. No, I forget what it was. It wasn't, I wish it was clean. That been great. <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's do this. I, I've done my job. <laughs> um, it was some kind of practice thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that, that's good. Number six, there are books. Um, so there are books out there that deal, deal with fear and anxiety. And sometimes, um, stories can really help. So, you know, if you find that it's a little bit more serious, you know, and you need that, like just more than just what you can handle, then, you know, that could be a good resource is going out and getting a book. There's all kinds. I mean, if you just go on the the interwebs, I mean, you can, you can find stuff that deal with that. Like I said, stories are usually really helpful and they'll be age appropriate so that you can teach them based on their age. Um, And then I think the last thing, you know, in extreme situations where you feel like you've done what you can 
or you're trying, you've tried everything, you've tried some resources is really is get professional help. Like this is something, especially as the child maybe gets a little older that you might be given some techniques and some strategies that you just didn't think about, you know, on how to handle it. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's real. It's, that's the reality is like every child has fears, even adults, you know, we, yeah. we all have fears. Sure. Um, we don't want people to minimize them. We want people to acknowledge them and realize that they're real. And so professional help can sometimes, you know, help, help solve that. Yeah. So don't, don't be afraid of that. Ha <laughs> Get it. Don't fear. <laughs> don't have any fear of that. Don't have any fear of professional help, which people do. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, but just that can be something that can be helpful ripped too. off a of phobia. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you have any fears <laughs> that your children are dealing with and you want to get solved, this is not the place to solve them. Yeah, right. No, no. <laughs> um, we would love feedback. Any kind of feedback you have, Alan, where should they, they go should, or what should they do? They should email us at podcast at dudes, the dads.com. And if you don't have any social anxiety, go to social media channels. What if they don't have email? Then they could go to the cave that they the live new kids in. These days are not using email. You know, that's a weird statement and actually it's accurate. True. And it's weird. <laughs> I, 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 I don't understand. Like the kids are like, using social media. It's too, just weird. Too, they only use the email to set up the, the social media channels and text. I mean, they'll use right. text. We'll, we'll no. have to get on the Instagram and the snap. No, I did. A, I did a gift certificate the other day to a young in <laughs> And they didn't have email. I had to text the gift certificate. That's strange to me. Email's been a, a, a staple for a number of years for many people. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, well, I wanted to do an e-gift certificate to Amazon. They didn't have an email? They didn't have email. That's, they, I had I to text know. it. Yeah, it's pretty That's awesome. Kind of it was pretty, as things move forward. Wow. Um, I anyway. love it. I'm sick of my all my emails. I mean, I'm, you're going to be wrong. I, I'm, I'm a little overloaded with emails. But that being said, I prefer emails in some context. But... Twitter at dudes to dads.com. What I'm not sick of is dudes to dads and at Twitter. At, well, no, dudes to dads <laughs> emails. Correct. I'm saying like spam email. Oh, yeah. And course. junk and that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. Is, you know, yeah. Well, I think you can productive get emails are fine. You can get that on social media too, though. That's true. So that's the problem. But anyway, uh, yeah. Twitter at dudes to dads, Facebook, dudes to dads.com. YouTube has got two channels. Go to dudes to dads and dad university. Pretty much uh, has a lot of great nuggets of information and wisdom. Mm-hmm. Um, and please go to iTunes and Stitcher. Leave a review and subscribe to all of those channels. It really helps perpetuate the show and keep this thing moving. Wow, yeah, it's a lot. A lot. We, we don't have Pinterest and uh, Instagram, Instagram, or Snapchat on dudes to dads. Right. We have it for Dad University. Yeah. Um, right. So we'll figure that out. Well, yeah. I think. <laughs> There's so many channels, so many so things. So many things. The man. kids these days. Yeah. Do we have Snapchat yet? No, we don't have Snapchat. <laughs> no, no Snapchat. I don't think either one of us wants to be on the Snapchat no, at this I point. Don't. Although we might do it a Facebook Live at some point. I think that'd I be think a good idea. We will do that. Actually, let's do that soon. We will. That's a great idea. In fact, idea. if anybody would like to hear us or see us on Facebook Live, please send us an email podcast yeah. at dudestodads.com. We'd great. like some feedback. Right. Uh, and then we could do that. That'd so. be great. With that, Alan. Thank you as always. Thank you. And we will see you next time. See you next time.